now we will discuss on the shear capacity of the web section in the iship section now the if you if you follow the code then you can see that the chapter number 5.11.1 describes various guidelines and various rules for undergoing the shear capacity check of the web now this checks has already been implemented in stat pro so if you follow the club clause or that article then you can see that in that very same chapter they have subdivided into two parts one is the ill check and one is the sheer buckling check of the web now how to uh, go for the whether it is it falls on the yielding check or it falls on the sheer buckling check that depends on various rules uh, if you see that uh, the first one is if this dp by tw ratio if it is uh, less than this uh, this ratio on the right hand side then the vu that is the nominal shear capacity of the web has to be taken as the shear yield capacity of the web vw which is specified in clause 5.11.4 now in similar way if the dp by tw ratio exceeds this ratio then the vw sorry vu has to be taken as the shear buckling capacity of the web that is vb as specified in the clause 5.11.5 so depending on this two guiding rule you the shear uh, capacity has to be categorized as whether it falls on the yielding condition or it falls on the shear buckling condition so here it is uh, that is the pictorial illustration of um, the, how the shear capacity check rules has been subdivided um, on the left hand side you can see that is the yielding one first of all as i've mentioned before that if um, if following the rule like dp by tw ratio if it is uh, it, if it falls under the rule one then it would go for the shear yield capacity check and if it doesn't follow that rule then it will fall to the shear buckling capacity check and shear buckling capacity check is also subdivided into two different parts one depending on the type of your section so first one is the unstiffened web so the unstiffened web is something like if you have any i ship section on or any plate gutter section which doesn't have any uh, any intermediate lateral stiffener along its length of the web section then it is known as the unstiffened web that means the web hasn't been stiffened laterally so that it can undergo any sort of buckling very easily and to check this buckling effect sometimes the designer provides some stiffener along the length of the web section so this type of uh, section is also known as the stiffened web section. So, STAT can't understand uh, whether it's uh, stiffened or un uh, unstiffened unless and until you instruct STAT with some parameter. So, what STAT wants from your side is define the spacing of that stiffener then it can understand that okay you have provided the spacing that means there is some stiffener so it would just follow the equation for this one by this one now both the checks are performed by statpro depending on the condition now here here you can see um, if you want to provide the spacing of the stiffener then you need to use the uh, parameter called tsp uh, tsp can be de defined directly from the design parameter under as4 4100 code also you can put it in the graphic uh, in, in, the, in the input editor and if you look into this equation you can see the vv is uh, uh, depending on some different uh, coefficient along with the vw um, the two coefficients are av and ad both these coefficients are depending on the variable called s which is known as the spacing of the stiffener so stat doesn't know this value all you need to do 
provide this uh, spacing then stat can understand that okay you have instructed stat pro that some stiffener is there along the length of the web so it would accordingly check for the uh, vv value according to the code and uh, it will check the equation for the stiffened web rules and accordingly it would uh, determine the vv and the vu and the final shear capacity of the web 